And for more, we're joined uh, by the former French ambassador to Iran, François Nicolo. Thank you for joining us here on France. pleasure. Should we worry? <laughs> yes. Yes, obviously. There was a time when uh, we had the feeling that Trump sincerely wanted to, to speak with the Iranian. He was almost begging uh, the, um, the, the supreme leader to, to, to accept a contact, to accept uh, some kind of the opening of a dialogue. But this time is over. Now, with what happened uh, happened recently, uh, first, of course, the the, f the first attacks uh, a few weeks ago uh, in front of the um, United Arab Emirates shore. Uh, this uh, took place a few days after the cancellation of, of waivers, precisely, on oil, Iranian oil exports. And uh, this uh, really strangl is strangling Iran. You know, at, at, up to now, Iran could export about uh, one million uh, barrels per day. Now, today, it's close to zero. And uh, so the, its vital interests are really in, at stake at the moment. And now... Which, which is the argument that Iran's been making, especially in this latest instance, the Japanese prime minister, who's clo a close ally of Donald Trump, uh, who uh, happened to be in Tehran when the incident happened. They're saying, why would we do this? Well, the, the, I mean, the, the, the attempt of a prime, a Japanese prime minister to find, a, to find a, a solution, I mean, to mediate, was a, from the beginning, actually, it was a failure. It had no chance to, to succeed, uh, first, because... Uh, Trump uh, himself uh, said it's too soon. I mean, to to enter into a, a, a mediation, and he said this when Abe was uh, in Tehran, which was not uh, very nice for the poor Abe. And um, then after that, of course, this uh, second attack uh, in the Oman Sea, and then this second attack uh, took place after the introduction of new sanctions, sanctions on uh, petrochemicals exports uh, for, uh, from Iran. And of course, now, I mean, Iran is in a, the impossible situation. The, the, um, the oil minister, Mr. Zangane, said now times are harder than in the, during the Iran-Iraq war, you know. And so they're really strangled at the moment. And uh, let, let, yes. Ambass Ambassador Nicolo, let's roll this back one second here. First of all, you heard the misgivings of Germany's foreign minister. What do you make of this video that we've all seen for, that was handed out by the uh, Pentagon? I don't believe it's the smoking gun. Uh, it's, uh, it's not quite clear yet. Of course, there are strong presumptions that uh, it, uh, the Iranians are behind the two attacks. It's logical, if you wish, but uh, we're still missing, the, as I said, the smoking gun, the, the real, the, the concrete proof that uh, the, Iranian, the Iranians are behind the, the two attacks. And it's quite interesting that, in fact, the statements uh, uh, have been produced by the State Department, by the, 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 the Defense Department, but we have not heard yet the um, intelligence community and it's trying a bit uh, backwards as if they were afraid to be instrumentalized to be manipulated as they were at of course as you remember very well at the outset of the of the Iraq Iraq invasion in 2003 yeah we, re we remember the that claim of weapons of mass destruction brought before the UN Security Council then in this instance, you have Donald Trump laying the blame squarely on Iran. He gave an interview to Fox News earlier on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, but he also said the door is open for negotiations. You know, he's, he's, he's saying everything and it's contrary. He just, he just tweeted, I believe, this morning that it was too soon to even think of a, the possibility of, a, of a, an agreement. I believe he wants it. He basically, Trump is a businessman. He wants an agreement. He does not want a war. He does not want a war uh, a few months before the opening of the electoral campaign, you know, for, and it's, uh, he knows that a war is bad for, for his re-election. Unfortunately, surrounded by hawks who are, in fact, uh, manipulating him some, somehow, um, to, to, to trying to corner him 
into a position where it, he cannot uh, back down without losing face. You know, it's, uh, it's creating really a mechanism which uh, is leading uh, in a, an inescapable way towards war. So um, we have seen how France and the European Union have had to, like the rest of the international community, abide by uh, these U.S. sanctions effectively ending uh, the uh, the uh, Iran nuclear deal, of which, you, by the way, you were one of the ones at the outset yes, of the negotiations of that. It, what does France do now? What does France do in the face of all that's going on? Does it have to follow the lead of the United States? I would like to know it, very little, in fact. The, 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 what, what can France do? What can uh, Europe do? You know, even if there is a political will on the economic side, and the, the, the big companies, uh, they don't obey their governments. You know, the, the American sanctions are, um, frighten them more that, uh, than any... Uh, all the any injunctions from their own governments in a, a terrible um, situation. We saw uh, this week uh, the uh, German foreign minister in Tehran. Do you regret the fact that we uh, didn't see the French foreign minister there? You regret the fact that, that we didn't see the French foreign minister in Iran. Yes, uh, the French foreign minister was in Iran about one year, a little more than one year ago, and it did not go very well, let's say, to, to say the least. And uh, now the time is not ripe, really, for a, for a visit, for a ministerial visit from the French side in Iran, unfortunately, but this is the, this is the reality. All right, uh, François Nicolo, former ambassador uh, to Tehran. Many thanks for joining us. My pleasure.